Hey everyone, this is Alex with another Rapid Fire Review, this time for Ubisoft's Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Extraction. This is Ubisoft's latest boardroom-born, low-effort, hollow, asset-flip, copy-and-paste job designed to maximize profits with minimal effort, respect to the arts, IP, and their consumers. And now that I've set the tone, we can begin with a little history lesson. In 2018, Ubisoft introduced the Operation Chimera expansion to Rainbow Six Siege that included the Outbreak mode. Outbreak was a limited-time, immensely popular event that quickly brought the game to record highs for player count. Here's a summary. The events of Outbreak took place in Truth or Consequences, New Mexico. There were three different missions available. You blow up a nursery for infection, you rescue a doctor who has got information, and you root out the source of the infection. Each mission consisted of three on-site operators finding their way through multiple level segments separated by safe rooms. Segments typically involve semi-linear trek through streets, buildings, hallways, and they were infected along the way. Scattered around the maps were crates for ammunition, gadgets, reinforcements, and health. And if you played Extraction, this all might sound very familiar. After just a month, they removed the limited time event. It would take the game almost two full years to reach the popularity of the limited time event once it ended. Ubisoft sprang to action and announced Rainbow Six Quarantine just over one year after the original event ended. I imagine because they had done the unthinkable. They had released a well-received, well-developed bit of gameplay and forgotten to charge a ton of money for the privilege, you know, outside the normal small fortune players could spend on skins. The development for this game, and that is their words, not mine, I would not call Control-C and Control-V development, uh, it moved along, and then we got to a real-life bit of an outbreak. And Ubisoft had to do what dozens of other game companies did during the pandemic, and they immediately changed infected to zombies or aliens, and a pandemic to invasion, and thus extraction itself was born. I honestly believe that this was the point in the game's creation where the only real work was done. Someone had to go through and retinker some character models and some scripts, and that's it. Eventually, all of the art was tweaked, dialogue was redone, and the game was glorious release for $40 to the masses at the beginning of this year. All right, on to the story of Extraction. Uh, there, there is no story. All right, on to the gameplay for Extraction. The game is broken up into four zones. New Mexico, the original setting of the Outbreak event. New York, San Francisco, and Alaska. Each zone feels totally unique. Local landmarks and distinct climates. You could definitely feel that you are... Oh, um, wait, 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 sorry. That was for a script uh, for a game where the devs gave a shit. This game has four distinct zones that in no way are distinct. You have all the Ubisoft greatest hits for your surroundings. You have hallway, room with window, room without window, room with plywood, dirty slime room, clean room, and everybody's standout favorite, other hallway. The mission structure is pretty simple for extraction. You and up to two other people will venture through each sub-areas going from insertion point to clean room to clean room to extraction point, hopefully accomplishing the set objective for each sub-zone along the way for XP. There are 13 total objectives that have a pretty wide range of quality and difficulty. Some are as simple as you click three glowing scrotums on the floor in the room you spawned in, there's no danger to you or your teammates whatsoever, and you get the experience right away. The other ones are piss off a boss and stab it in the ass with your knife. Typically, at the hardest levels, my teams, both friends and randoms assigned to me by Ubisoft, chose to skip the tedious objectives. It was just easier to skip them and get to the easier objectives and farm XP. Sweet. Shit! <laughs> Stealth. You walked up right to him and shot him in the face. Oh, oh, Claymore. Once you finish an area, instead of simply moving on to the next zone, learning something about the team and story and experiencing new things, Ubisoft decided that you need to do the same mission you just did again. And this time, make sure you ping ten of those glowing scrotums before your teammates shoot them immediately. Then find a rare alien, which doesn't always spawn. Stun them before your teammates alert them, and then if the moon is waning, you'll get a check mark for the study system. There's a door right there, but he wants to... You did it! You fucking did it! Now do not die. That was a spiker. And he was... Instead <laughs> of using the Shit. door... Instead of using the door, he was trying to punch through the wall. Once you do that, do it again. But this time, with only headshots. The progression makes me feel like 
all they did was add three new zones to a free-to-play one-month-long event and then realized they didn't have anywhere near enough content for even a $40 title. So they did what Ubisoft does. They put in Roblox to run up that meter time. You also progress by leveling up any of the operators available to you. The ones just kind of copied over from the other game. This typically requires playing on the much harder difficulties, but you'll still end up running the same missions at least a few times. Progressing here was a chore. The amount of effort Ubisoft put forth perhaps would have been enough for a single playthrough of each zone. But forcing players to replay sections while fighting teammates for chances to kill Ness and get headshots was absolutely miserable. And what's the payoff? New story parts or stuff to uncover? Nope, there's no story. I ended up doing all my study quests in solo mode. It was the only way not to make my friends miserable. This, of course, made the time I spent in the game to progress take even longer. For all the complaining thus far, my experience wasn't completely bad, though. I got to spend at least 10 hours of the 20-hour playtime playing games with buddies. And for me, it's almost impossible to have a truly bad time doing so. So to the people saying they had fun playing it with friends, I would simply reply, of course. This game can be fun with friends because doing almost anything with friends should be fun. Cleaning out a septic tank could be fun with friends, but doesn't mean we give credit to septic tanks for being fun. On the top of this giant pile of disappointment is the store. And it depresses me to think about the people buying skins in a three-person PvE game. Even the crap in Fortnite, which no one should be buying anyway, can at least be shown off to the mass quantities of random children for clout. These skins get to be shown to two other people. And if your online teammates are anything like mine, they'll just take off immediately anyways, and it won't matter what you look like. Oh, and if you have a bunch of premium currency from their other game, you know, the one they copied everything over in Siege, none of that stuff applies here. What's funny about this game is nothing in particular is all that bad. The gun system and the barricades are fine. They're from Siege, so we know they work. The enemies are from an event that everyone liked. I mean, the AI's terrible, but, you know, it's it's fine. You... What? How did he go through? Wait. He's what? not. He's trying to... Even though there's a wall right there that he can walk through, he decided to break that wall because the AI is terrible. The missions are standard, and nothing here is truly that bad. This is a great example, though, where something is actually greater than the sum of its parts. But that something that we're talking about here is how bad this game actually is. A bunch of average or below average pieces combined to make something that feels straight lousy, and certainly not worth $40. This is ultimately a $40 repackaged, formerly free product with a few more maps and enemy types. They beefed up the playtime more with the grind than the content, and unless you're playing the game on the hardest difficulty, it's not even that interesting. This game should be a hard pass for virtually everybody, even Game Pass subscribers. Aliens Fireteam and Back for Blood are also on Game Pass, and by comparison, Extraction makes them look like masterpieces. Or spend a little money and get GTFO. It's great. Someday, people will get tired of Ubisoft shit. The lazy facsimiles, reused assets, garbage or non-existent stories, and relentless grind that later on, after the reviews come out, they sell you the solution for. And it's probably not going to be this time, but I'm hoping it's soon. I'm a Tom Clancy fan, I'm a Rainbow Six and a Siege fan, and even if you aren't, I think we all deserve far better from Ubisoft. I'm giving Extraction a 3 out of 10. At first, I considered the 4, you know, slightly below average. And perhaps, in a vacuum, it could reach a 4. But for me, like in virtually all instances, context matters. And if you take into consideration what Ubisoft tried to pull by just simply repackaging a free event, I'm taking away a point. Well, thanks for sticking through this one to the end. Let me know what you guys thought of the game. And as always, we shall see you on the next Angry Joe Show. Not gonna do it. He's getting sucked in. Once he gets sucked in, he's, it's over. And then he dies, and you have to do this all over again. The jizz is coming. Pull. You keep hitting. Keep hitting G. Oh, no! <laughs> right, well. Now get the hell out before you have to rescue. Die in here. Extraction successful. You still have to rescue my dude. You can't. <laughs> You're going to sit in this chair and, re and play this until <laughs> Damn you, it. And you rescue. We play. All right, we got it this time. Is that possible? Wait, I thought you failed the extraction. Uh, I did it. He's back. Look, he's back. He's back. I did, did it. Did OJ fail? I'd never fail, Alex. What the fuck does that even mean? Did OJ? No, chat. Am I wrong? Did not OJ fail? Fail? Man, you, no. OJ failed. That's not what. You, I didn't see that.
Bam, he's back. Task failed successfully. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs>